Le Sommet international de l'éducation du futur réunit une soixantaine de conférenciers du monde entier. Des pionniers et des innovateurs issus du monde de l'éducation, bien évidemment, mais également des êtres inspirants, issus des chemins de sagesse ou des chemins d'apprentissage et de créativité dans différents domaines. Les arts, les sciences, l'économie, le lien avec la nature, le sport, etc. Des expériences et des chemins de vie qui sont un formidable enrichissement pour le monde de l'éducation. Le professionnalisme des traductions, en simultané, et l'incroyable richesse de toutes ces conférences offre un horizon de point de vue vaste et varié, très complet, qui en font au final une véritable formation professionnelle pour les enseignants, les éducateurs et tous les professionnels de l'éducation, mais également une formation à la parentalité consciente et une formation individuelle à la vie consciente. Face à toute cette richesse et aux divers retours, nous avons décidé d'offrir toutes ces conférences à tous, partout dans le monde en français et en anglais, quelquefois en allemand et en espagnol. Découvrez la vision d'acteurs audacieux et influents du changement, vers un monde éthique, solidaire, généreux et profondément respectueux de tous, des cultures, des peuples, des règnes et de la planète. Un incroyable panel de conférences, couvrant toutes les dimensions de l'éducation, pour un futur ayant du sens, une humanité épanouie et une terre qui respire. Une chose est sûre, votre vie, et à travers vous, celle des enfants, ne sera plus la même après avoir écouté toutes ces conférences. Pour avancer, nous avons besoin de vous. Nous avons besoin de votre générosité solidaire. L'organisation du sommet et l'édition des conférences ont nécessité des milliers d'heures de travail et nécessitent encore beaucoup de temps et d'investissement. Nous faisons appel aux dons libres et spontanés pour compléter le financement du sommet et, si possible, continuer à l'enrichir de nouvelles conférences. Votre soutien est vraiment précieux et vital pour aller jusqu'au bout de cette aventure extraordinaire. Merci. Happy to introduce you, Neil. Um, Neil has taught a number of inner city schools over 25 years. Um, he's an architect. Uh, he's been on the trustee for Blueprint, uh, formerly the Lawrence, um, Stephen Lawrence Charitable Trust for the past 15 years. He is the head of product design and architecture at Gravenay School in South London, where he introduced architecture to the curriculum, winning various open house competitions and being honored as open house teach teacher of the year. He um, has received national recognition for his celebrating architecture initiative, recognizing the work of young, talented, non-traditional and traditional students at Gravity School and has been endorsed by the GLA Good Growth by Design. Uh, he's been a speaker also at various um, events and um, he uh, has been um, awarded also the Hidden Hero Award and a Lifetime Award by Sound Advice. Today in his conference, he is here to say how to build a world uh, for childhood, but how the words are important in, um, in architecture. That's something that he speaks about already, and that's why Abel invited him to come. But for the conference, he has invited him to say how words could influence uh, children's life and the world that they're building for themselves. So thank you, Neil. Happy to be here with you. Thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, absolutely fantastic forum. Uh, and I much uh, appreciate that you've uh, uh, welcomed me with such open arms. Uh, I'm not actually an architect. I teach architecture, but I went to art school and, and I always wanted to be an architect. 
So that is how I got into teaching architecture. So uh, sorry, if I, no, it's no problem. So let me just to get just in case anybody wants to get me on the legalities of life, you know. So just let me begin by saying. Um, um, I've been teaching your right for about 25 years now, and I love teaching and I love working with young people. Young people give you a sense of joy, a sense of happiness, and a sense of accomplishment. So I have two initiatives. One is called Celebrating Architecture, where we take young students into the actual built environment and we teach them about scale, proportion, problem solving, and we come back and we design pavilions and we look at color, shape, form, texture. And at the end of the um, program, the students are usually immersed into the actual environment of architecture, which is a language that they're not familiar with. So when we say non-traditional, we mean uh, those parents who um, are not creative, uh, there may be uh, parents from other countries that come into England. They may be parents that uh, are in England, but don't see creativity as the way forward. So we inspire them, we infuse them. And a lot of my work, I, we make films. And so this is why I wanted to uh, share my screen. So what I'm going to do, and our films have a lot of music, and not many words. So the first of my film just tells you about this, the other initiative which I run is called Homegrown Plus. Homegrown Plus is about all of the young people that I've taught who have become architects, who have become creative, they're homegrown. And the plus are all their friends that they bring to me for me to help them to get into the creative industry. So that's the Homegrown Plus. So without further ado, what I'm going to attempt to do now is um, uh, share my screen and actually um, get a, a, one of the first films that, that I've done, um, which introduces, introduces you to um, what we do, what we're about, and it shows you where we are and in the world and the, some of the things that we do. Right, here we go. Oh, and the music's always good. So turn up, listen to the music and enjoy. my luck, I'm going to use my own dice. So that first video that you saw, basically it was by an opera by Bellini uh, called Casa Diva. And the whole idea is um, this Druid queen fell in love with a Roman and she bore two students for him, two kids for him. Unfortunately, the Romans wanted to kill the Druids and the Druids wanted to kill the Romans. But ultimately, she got betrayed. And the reason why I'm playing that music is because we, as people, have uh, we have a duty 
to make sure that we do not be betray this next generation. This generation of young creatives, this generation of potential architects, we have to make sure that we give them everything. We give them the tools. We give them everything so that they come, they learn from us, and then they become these fantastic people. So I connect to people like yourselves, Naomi Paymal, who's uh, absolutely amazing. So we're connected to Bolivia, uh, Uruguay, Peru, Brazil, Mexico, India, China, uh, through, through uh, Naomi. And we teach people, connect with people to our website around the world to get our uh, creatives. And so one of the things that we have to do is we have to design um, structures in place to infuse young people to become creative. And, and in order to do that, uh, we have to give them Trojan horses. Trojan horses is we have to make them think that they're doing something else, but little do they know they're being creative because uh, creativity in the curriculum in England has been diminished. Is they're trying to maths, English, history, all the subjects that uh, involve theory, they think these are the subjects. But in England, we're trying to show them that creativity is just as important. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to show you another short film, and it's about how we get young people into, um, into becoming creative. And we got, we've got something called GLAM, and it's, uh, it's called GLAM. GLAM goes global. So what it is is GLAM stands for Gucci, Louis Vuitton, architecture and me and glam is about wearable architecture sustainable wearable architecture we get young people to through the pandemic we get them to make uh, wearable architecture from their recycle bins from sustainable uh, products from uh, cardboard boxes from uh, egg cartons from their packets that they get delivered from our supermarket banks. And so all of this makes it an even playing field. So the next video you're going to see is, um, it's called, it's an advert where we advertise our glam. And this is what it's all about. Hey, this is General Levy with an invite on behalf of the big man like Neil Pinder. Homegrown Plus presents Glam Goes Global on Saturday and Sunday, the 17th and 18th of July 2021. It's a fusion of sustainable and wearable architecture and fashion. Glam Goes Global and it's a homegrown plus and their superstar lineup is coming up with architects and fashion professionals. It's all about Gucci and Louis Vuitton architecture on the 17th and the 18th of July 2021. Be there or be square because it's going to be wicked, wicked! <laughs> So that that is a so that is an advert we do in 2021 to get and it went around the world to get people involved in and in thinking about architecture and you saw everything was made from recycled so there was recycled newspaper that made a, a dress there was recycled packaging that made the the, the sleeves of a shirt. There was recycling, recycled toilet rolls that made platform shoes. So everything's about being recycled. And this is how you get young people to become creative, thinking outside of the box. And all of this, all the time is, we, sp we call it, we spread our magic dust of creativity. And if you allow people to be creative, then they can determine their own future. If you teach young people how to draw, they can draw their own future. They can go anywhere and create, and you give them this free mind, 
this free expression all the time. So there's another, um, uh, so what we did with GLAM, we connected to the Gambia. And in the Gambia, they didn't have any electricity. They didn't have any Wi-Fi. They didn't have any computers. So we donated computers from our school. We uh, got them Wi-Fi. We got them electricity. And when you see what they made, it was it's literally unbelievable. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you um, what they are. Uh, just before that, I'm going to show you uh, another video uh, where where they um, uh, uh, have some end products of what they made. So this video is here. And this is another video that we do to infuse young people to get into architecture. Here come the hot stepper, Murderer. I'm the lyrical gangster, Murderer. big up the crew in the area, Murderer. still have it like that, Murderer. no, no, we don't die, yes, we multiply, anyone press will hear the valet is saying. So that was another video that we did. And you see the young people, they want to learn how to create. And we give them examples like Bilbao, the, the museum in Bilbao. We give them Einstein. We give them all of the tools. And that's what we have to do. We have to give them the tools so that they can go out and be creative. We show them how to cut paper. We show them how to stitch with paper. We show them how to join with paper without using glues by interlocking it. And all of these small techniques gives the young people the ideas, it gives them the structure, it helps them to ultimately become creative all the time. And as I said, what we do is we make films all the time because when you talk to young people, they turn off. They, they say, yeah, 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 and they turn off. So we, with our films, they all can see. And I've got, uh, when you see the rest of my films, you'll see that everything we do, they're engaged all the time. And so the next film I'm going to show you is uh, how um, the Gambia, uh, this is the, the work we did in the Gambia, how basically they, uh, you saw a little bit of it before, but now you can see how they are working in, in, in the Gambia and doing and making fantastic, fantastic designs. And bearing in mind, these students, these young people come from villages around different areas. So they're not exposed to the same privileges that inner city students are exposed to. So here we go with this one. So that, in that video, you saw every single thing was made.
from the recycle bin. The shoes were made from recycled material. The, uh, the, the, the buildings were made from matchsticks. Everything was made from recycled material. And we sent them the previous slide. They saw the video. Uh, and then they went and did all of the, the, the ideas and came up with these fantastic designs. The trees, everything was made from recycled material. And so that's what we want to teach our young people, to be creative, but you don't have to have a lot of money to be creative. And you could be creative just by giving these young people the tools to actually be creative. So we, as older people, we have to teach them the proper language, the language of design, the language of architecture. So in my next film, uh, it's in French, so I've got it translated into French. And this is how architects take, uh, they take the language of architecture and use it to their advantage. But we, as uh, free-minded, free-spirited people, we have to make sure that the young people are always know about the language that they can use and which is socially acceptable to be used in architecture. And so this gives you my next film. And I've got one more film after this, and then we can have a discussion. Yeah? So... This is the film. So I've got this film translated into French so that at least all of the French uh, contingent can uh, see this film. Oh, sorry, I just shrunk it down. There we go. be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on Skag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on Skag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on Skag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on Skag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on Skag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on Skag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on Skag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. 
will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on Skag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on Skag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. I hope you understood that one. No, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you, you, can, you can explain it in English a bit, uh, the subject of the, of the movie. All right, then. The subject of the movie was um, architects like to use complex languages and they used to like to use complex terms. And instead of talking and engaging with the, with the people like doctors, when they give you a diagnosis, they explain to you in, uh, in a basic language that you can understand. But architects, they take their language and they uh, use the language that they use for bricks, the buildings, the infrastructure of the buildings, They use those complicated language. And what this does is this excludes a whole uh, generation, a whole diaspora, a whole um, group of people who feel excluded from the buildings that they're building for. So we, as Homegrown Plus, we break it down and we make sure they understand the language of architecture and that they feel inclusive into the process. And when they become architects, then they can de design the buildings for the people that look like them, who talk like them, who are like them. And the people who come in and want to design the buildings, they have to learn that they have to engage with this, uh, these members of society. They have to engage with the community. They, have, they can't just sit back and preach to the community, you should do this, you should do this, you should do that. So in that video, you, we have redefined architectural language. We have taken control of the narrative so that we can get all of the young people uh, from non-traditional and traditional backgrounds to be engaged by the language that we would like them to use in architecture, architecture so that they can go back to their community and um, uh, reinvigor and educate their people, educate the people about what a good building should look like. So from a very young age, we, we get young students to understand that this is their building. This is where they live. This is their town, their city. These are their playgrounds. So they should be the one designing for these places. And uh, the last video that you're going to see um, is about the climate change. And the question is, is diversity crucial to saving the planet? And you'll see the words, is diversity crucial to saving the planet? So this leads us seamlessly into the next video where we're saying that all of us, are responsible for the planet. We only get one planet. We only have one planet. And all of us have to take responsibility. We can't afford for big business to take responsibility anymore. We can't afford for people to tell us that profit, 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 profit is the only thing that counts. So what we've done is we're getting young people to mobilize themselves. Uh, to draw their environment, design their environment, but we also are getting them to realize that if they don't do anything, this planet, this one planet will not be inhabitable in 50, 60, 70 years time. So please watch this video. This is the last video. And, uh, and then we could have uh, a discussion and talk but it explains perfectly um, what we think we have to do about 
saving the planet. And this is the only way forward. If you've got any questions, please um, ask a bill and uh, fire away with the questions. I don't mind. Ask as many questions as you want because I believe that education is a two-way a two-way situation where I know something, you know something, and you can ask me and I can ask you. So this is the way that I teach my students. I don't know everything. You know, you may know more than me at, about certain things, but all I am is a facilitator of giving information and helping you to become a better person, a better part of you. So. This is the last video. Um, I hope you like it. Turn up the volume because um, it's going to be good and listen to the beginning of it. It's really important. Every part of this video is important. Small minds. Discuss other people. Gossip. Good minds discuss events. Great minds discuss ideas. What about sunrise? What about rain? What about all the things that you said we were to gain? What about killing fears? Is there a time? What about all the things that you said was yours and mine? Did you ever stop to notice all the blood we shed before? Did you ever Stop this notice, this crying herb, this weeping show.
Right, so you saw the video. So basically, we, I made that video with young people, and it's about how the planet, as you can see, is dying. So I've just got a little bit of um, script to read about it, and, and then you could ask me as many questions as you want. Um, as you can see, part of this video is centered on the rainforest and its indigenous people who are like us. In December 1988, the Brazilian rubber tapper and environmentalist activist Chico Mendes predicted he would not live until Christmas, which was shortly before his 44th birthday. At first, he said, I thought I was fighting to save rubber trees. Then I thought I was fighting to save the Amazon rainforest. Now I realize I'm fighting for humanity. Three days before Christmas, 1988, Mendez was shot dead. Since Mendez's murder, more than 450,000 square camilla, camilla, uh, uh, case of Amazon and area as big as, as big as California has been destroyed, primarily in Brazil, but also in Peru, Colombia, Venezuela, Suriname, Guyana, and French Guyana. That equivocates to an average of 10,000 acres, which is the equivalent of 5,500 football pitches every day being destroyed. Scientists say that the Amazon has suffered losses at an accelerated rate since Bolsonaro took office in January 2019. The Brazilian president has encouraged ag agricultural mining and activities in the world's largest rainforest. The Amazon is home to about 3 million species of plants and animals and 1 million indigenous people. The Amazon is home to the greatest expanse of forests. The rate of loss has increased by more than 30%. The Amazon, historically, a great carbon absorber since trees take in carbon dioxide and releases oxygen, now releases more carbon than it stores, which adds to rather than reduces our global climate crisis. With as much as 17% of the forest lost already, scientists believe that the tipping point will be reached at 20% or 25% of deforestation, even if climate change is tamed. If, as predicted, global temperatures rise by four centigrade, much of the central, eastern and southern Amazon will certainly become barren scrubland. Global warming is about us. In 2002, the World Green Building Council was officially formed with 8,000 members. Australia, Brazil, Canada, India, Japan, Mexico, Spain, and USA, all without us. Buildings are responsible for almost 40% of global carbon, carbon emissions and 50% of global material use. 91% of people, their families, live where air pollution is exceeds well, World Health Organization limits. People spend 90% of time indoors. So the quality of the indoor environment is critical in fighting infectious diseases. By 2020, the global population will increase to 9.8 billion and the world's building stock will double. Accelerating devastation, environmental, social and economical impact on the built environment. For all of these reasons, it's about us. It's about our young people. It's about everybody engaging and realizing that we are a tipping point. And if we don't educate, if we don't start to educate our young people to be responsible citizens, not to chase the buck, the, the dollar, the money, 
then we won't have a world to live in. And for all of these reasons, it's why I enthuse young people to think more about the humanity, about where they live, how they live, what is designed for them, who's designing it for them. And for all of the above reasons, the films, the videos that we make, and for everything that you've seen, we have to make sure that the next generation is informed. The next generation knows every single thing that they need to know about how the next 50 years is going to turn out for them. Otherwise, we will be lit. We will be, as you saw in my first film, it will be the ultimate betrayal as Casadeva got betrayed by her Roman lover. If you want to ask me some questions, I know we've got about 15 minutes left, so please feel free to ask me. I don't see any questions yet um, right. in the chat, but um, just uh, comments, beautiful. Um, so exciting, it really is. Uh, so I, I want to say you, you're, you're more a filmmaker, an inspiring filmmaker than you are an architect, as I thought in the beginning, <laughs> right? Um, it, it's become out of necessity because I hate PowerPoint. Mm. Right. So and I say to my students that it's death by PowerPoint, you know, so and so the kids, the young people, they know that if I want to tell them something, I'd crunch it together and make a little film and then they understand it more. And, Great and while, it, while if you show them a PowerPoint, if you read to them uh, and you're reading long uh, sections of material. They switch off. Yeah, yeah, it's Literally. true. It's it's very true, and and the music you put is very powerful. It's funny because um, I personally uh, had a created a festival in Laguna Beach, California, where I lived for twenty years, which was about sustainable consciousness. And mm -hmm. in the last festival that I did, I had the young people speak and I made a little movie. It's actually because I'm speaking as well on the 27th and on mm -hmm. the under my name, you have a little video and it has mm -hmm. the same music as your last video from Michael Jackson. What about yeah. us? Which yeah. is such a powerful uh, song that just moves you. Uh, moves me anyway greatly and um, and the images you chose and oh it brings tears and it's so um poignant and yeah. so yeah i mean it, this is what this is why we have to make sure i mean i i showed this on a premiere the other night and everybody related to it and and the and when i was asked to be guest speaker um uh, I, they said to me, what do you want to talk about? And we were talking about climate change and diversity. And the only thing I can think of is what about us? The people who don't have the voices. The people whose voices are silenced by big money. The people somebody who... Asked, somebody did ask, sorry, in the chat, what what change should we make in priority? What would be the first thing you would tell the people to change? What people? The young people or, 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 or older people? I guess all of us. Um, is education, education, education. If you educate and they, if you educate individuals, you can build a nation. If you leave people uneducated, then they rely on somebody else. So education should be free at the point and good education. And what we need to do is to make creativity. So you can educate people with your math, your, your chosen subject of your vernacular area. You can educate people on the sciences, on the, on the mechanisms, but when you educate people to be free, that's the transition. And so equal weight should be given to uh, the creative subject as the, um, as, as the theoretical subject. Because what happens is 
if you've got theoretical subjects, you're just sending everybody down that line because the formulas that they have to know for math, Pythagoras, da -da 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 -da. there are certain formulas that they always have to know. But when you give somebody creativity or you give them the power to be creative, you're giving them 360. You're not, you're not, you're not narrowing their mind. And this is, the, that, this is the thing that we have to realize is we can learn off of them. They can learn off of us. And I stand in front of my, my students and the first thing I say to them, I'm useless at math. And you see so many, so many people just go, because, yeah, because everybody thinks you have to be good at math. But I say to them, I design things. I design, but, and that involves math. But it only involves the math I want to engage with. Yes, yeah. So if it's a complicated, say, area, I would learn the math to work out how to do it myself. But we don't need to know all the formulas. You know, we don't need to know all of the all of the uh, 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 prescriptive terms and everything else. So what true. I'm cutting you because the woman who, who the person that I mean, Michelle, yeah, who asked the question, she said, but education takes time, but not this kind of education, not when you only learn what's necessary. It doesn't take much time. So mm -hmm. that, it, you're mm -hmm. answering the question, the second question she had put in. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, education does take time. But, you know, we have uh, something in England called forest school where kids are learning by going out and learning and that's the greatest adventure and and they learn even quicker and better when you allow people to develop their 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 their, uh, their area rather than saying you have to do this you have to do this and you have to do this and setting goals and in our educational system at the moment we've got test 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 and and, and students uh, have been taught how to do tests. And so subsequently, I mean, the other day, one of my, my students, a bright student, um, passed the test to get into the school, et cetera, et cetera. I gave him a pair of scissors, a, a pair of wire cutters, and I said, cut this. And he, and he was having difficulty. He said, I'm left-handed. I said, so am I. So we, we, we are given on one hand, but we're taken away 90% on the other hand. But if you want to create a society that follows, then you just teach them a narrow curriculum. And teaching them the narrow curriculum, they follow you like sheep. I agree with you. Sandra is asking who decides which education is important and in what and how we educate ourselves. So I also lecture on power, control, and money. So the people that have the power, and if you take away color, creed, race, religion, sexuality, the people that have the power, they want the power. They want to keep hold of the power. So how do you keep hold of the power? You keep hold of the power by keeping your people uneducated about expressionism, about being creative. So they have the power, they keep the control through the syllabuses, through the educational processes that they have developed over the years. And once you have got those two things in place, then you can make the money. And that is where that is what they want to make. That's their only interest is profit. As Bolsonaro has proven, as everyone has proven throughout the world. But there's a tipping point. You can't profit, 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 profit. You can't keep on making profit. There's got to be a, a, a time when you can't make any more. So when you keep the people uh, creatively poor, and if you saw in my video, um, the best people are cash poor, but love rich. 
Uh, say it one more time. They're cash poor. Yes. But, but love rich. But love rich, yes, of course. Mm. Yeah. So this is what we have to teach people. You can be cash poor but love rich. And if you're love rich, you'll always find ways. That's beautiful. I have to say that I was really um, inspired by, by the first couple of videos where you showed all the great things that were made by recycling and how you teach people to, to make things without using glue. By um, So I thought that is extraordinary. I would want to learn more about that. And I think that's so important because we don't know what to do with all this mess, plastic and all this. And, and, and now there's really creative people making extraordinary things as you show. And I love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But you, you do realize that the plastic bag was never meant to be mass produced. The, plastic bag, the, the first plastic bag was meant to be recycled and used again and again and again and again and again. But somebody saw a market where if I make the bags thinner, they don't last as long or they don't last. And then I can make millions of them. And so what I also teach the students is that we're just part of the food chain. And if we as responsible citizens mess the food chain up something there's always going to be something happening negative to the food chain and then that's the detriment to the earth yeah before i go um and i've got about eight minutes left yeah yes. would you mind if i play that, that, you, that you have six minutes left Six minutes left, so for three and a half minutes, I want to play that Earth song, Michael Jackson, one more time, so that people understand and listen to what Denzel Washington yes. said in the beginning. You know, if we, we, on this platform, we discuss, we come up with ideas, and we have to make sure that our ideas get implemented. Also, I've just developed a, a program called Nylon, New York and London, where I'm taking 10 part one students to New York this summer to have an un unbelievable experience in architecture and, and, and meeting yes. all the big architectural practices and small architectural practices and, uh, and socially related architectural practices with inside New York. So this Ready. is what... And, and if anybody wants to link into me, please just follow me on LinkedIn and you will see all of the our uh, uh, nylon New York and London that 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 we're doing. So great, great place to do it in New York. It's a beautiful architecture there. Yeah. And I know somebody's saying, yeah, but you're going to be using up carbon footprints. But just for this case, you can't deny these students the opportunity to come back and then they would spread their wings. They would spread the message that you can do things differently. And that's what it's all about. So without further ado, let me just play that. Listen to what Denzel Washington says, please. And let me play the Earth song again, uh, for uh, the Earth video again, because this is what it's all about. Um, also really wanted to say it's great you're connected to Noemi and Pedagogy 3000 because they are giving all this education for free. And it's one thing I hear from you that also it should be uh, that way, that education should be available to everyone. Free at, the point, free at the point of delivery, yes, yes. Right, here we go and then we've got two minutes. Small minds discuss other people, gossip. Good minds discuss events, great minds discuss ideas.
What about sunrise? What about rain? What about all the things that you said we were to gain? What about killing fields? Is there a time? What about all the things that you said was yours and mine? Did you ever stop to notice all the blood we shed before? Did you ever stop this notice, this crying herb, this weeping show? Neil, it's very beautiful. Thank We're you very going much. To switch it over, um, it's time. Thank you. Thank, thank you thank very you, much. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thank you.